Hello humans, I'm the alien Dr. Miyuka Kobe Alien and welcome back to another video here in Minecraft Federal Condition taking a look at what third party utilities and software I use on Minecraft Federal Condition. So if you're not aware, last week I uploaded this video talking about what resource packs I use in Minecraft Bedrock Edition and this is sort of like a sequel to that video if you like. Likewise, this video and the last video were also inspired by Exumavoid's video about Java Edition Minecraft mods. Now, like last week, this video will simply be a brief overview of all of the different utilities and third-party software I use. It will not be a straight-up tutorial, as I mentioned, just a small showcase. As well as that, all the download links and creators links can be found in the description. As well, I would recommend you go and check them out. This list does not include any add-ons or resource packs that I use in Bedrock Edition. For resource packs, you can check out the previous video. Now, without further ado, let's get into what software I use to play Minecraft Bedrock Edition. So the first one I want to show you is one I've made myself and it is my resource pack converter. You can download it from the aliendoctor.com and what it essentially does is convert resource packs between Bedrock and Java and Java and Bedrock. It's just received an update as you can see here it now has a fancy loading bar which is pretty cool. I'm going to show it to you really quickly because I really like it. <laughs> So the resource pack I'm actually using is Foxy Dotel's Brighter Textures, which I showcased in the previous resource pack video. The reason I'm using this one is because I use it on Bedrock Edition and I want to be able to use it on Java as well. So now I can use my pack converter to convert it. So if we just open the EXE, we would need to make sure Bedrock to Java is selected. We can put the uh, name here, so Foxy Notel Brightness Pack and then Brightness Pack by Foxy No Tail. There we go. We can just hit stock version. Okay. And there we go. You got this lovely loading bar, which I'm very, very proud of. And it will go ahead and convert your world. All right. So there we go. We can see that it has finished the conversion now. And it's going to tell you how many files it's converted, all that sort of thing. It puts it into a nice zip folder if you are using Java. If you're on Bedrock, then it will put it in a muck pack. You also get the actual folder that just contains all the pack files if you want to browse through that and make any adjustments as well, which is quite nice. It features a highly customizable config file as well, so you can change all the various configuration stuff here as well, which is super nice. And it also details some logs as well, so you can see exactly what was converted. Awesome. Excellent. So that's my software. <laughs> so now let's go ahead and show you some other people's software. So starting off, we have the FOV Changer by Xroix. Not sure if that's exactly how I'm saying their name, but that's what it is. And it simply lets you Optifine Zoom, but in Bedrock Edition, if you want to download it, you simply go to the GitHub link in the description, click releases or the latest release, and then this zip. You could then unzip that file and it is literally just an exe that you could run. I personally have it pinned to my taskbar, as you can see. Once you open it, you press the start button and it should connect to Minecraft. And loading back into Minecraft, you can see if I hold down C, which is the key that I chose for this, then it will change my FOV to zoom in. It also lowers your sensitivity. It doesn't have the smooth camera like it does on Java Edition Optifine, but this is certainly still better than nothing. The FOV changer has a ton of various different settings. So as you can see here, you can change the key binder that you use. You can set it to hide your hand and also uh, change the sensitivity. You could also set it to change how low the FOV actually goes. It also has some Discord integration as well somewhere. Where I personally have the Discord integration disabled, but what it basically does is will show what server you're connected and show your Minecraft version on your Discord profile. As I mentioned, I personally play with this disabled because I don't want people to be able to see the IP of the server that I am playing on most of the time. You could also set it up to do things like auto attach. So this is when you first open the software, it will automatically attach to Minecraft. Overall, it's a really nice little program with a very useful feature, especially for video makers where we want to point at stuff. Another one that I use to play Minecraft literally every time I launch the game pretty much is Foxy Dotel's MCBE Switcher Plus software. 
Now, Foxy Dotel has a full dedicated video on how to use it on his channel. I'm not going to go into the setup for it. You'll have to watch Foxy's video for that. But as it suggests in the name, this is basically a version switcher. So you can download versions from another app and then you just import them into this version switcher. So these are all the versions that I've downloaded, but really you have access to any version of Minecraft that has an Apex, including the x86 versions if you want to play that. Likewise, the plus version of this software also includes a preview switcher, so you can switch between the preview versions. One of the things I really like about this version switcher is it also has profile options. So as you can see here, I can switch between profiles. So the main profile is the main profile that I play on essentially. So if we load that up, you'll see it's just my normal game. So as you can see right here, when it loads, I've got my skin and I've got all my normal worlds and server list and all of that sort of thing. However, closing this and switching to the add-on making, for example, and then hitting the play, it will switch to the profile that I use to create add-ons. So as you can see, it's loaded and I now have a completely different set of worlds and also a completely different set of add-ons as well because, you know, this is the one that I use for actually developing add-ons. So you can see here I have lots of in-progress stuff and things like that. <laughs> Likewise, you could use the profile switcher for switching between profiles for the preview as well. So if you wanted to, you could use the same profile with the same set of worlds, resource packs and skins on the preview version as well as the stable release, which is really quite nice. Now, all a profile actually is, is a com.mojang folder. So if you know anything about those, then you'll know that that's where all of your settings, resource packs, behavior packs, worlds, and things like that are stored. So it's not switching accounts. It's simply switching com.mojang folders. If we open up the main one, you can see here we've got the behavior packs and the skin packs, resource packs, worlds, that sort of thing. We have the settings in here and... Yeah, it is not switching accounts, simply switching com.mojang folders. Next up, we have Foxy Dotel's pruning software. Once again, he has a full video on how to use this on his channel, although this video is actually showing an outdated one. Nevertheless, this is a super easy tool to use to prune your worlds. If you don't know what pruning is, it basically is resetting an area of your world, resetting the chunks in your world. So loading in to where I have it downloaded and simply opening the exe, you can see here you're prompted with this choose world or browse screen. So you can use the browse function if you have a world downloaded, say off a server, like I often do for the Pinecraft server. So there's the browse function is quite useful, or you can actually choose a world from your Bedrock Edition server list, which is also quite nice. Anywho, once you've chosen a world, you are greeted with all of these various different settings. So here you can choose the areas that you want to prune in the overworld, nether and end. So, you know, as you can see here, we are currently pruning from minus 3000 to 3000 in the overworld on the X and Z. One, minus 1000 to 1000 in the nether and minus 800 to 800 in the end as well. The reason that these are not exact coordinates is because of chunks. It can only prune a chunk, it can't prune half a chunk, right? You've also got this useful feature over here, which is optimized after trim. What this essentially does is reorganize the database for the world to make it more efficiently be read and write to essentially, or if I believe that's how it works. Anyway, if we press trim world, it will warn you about making a backup. You should make a backup, but I'm not going to today because I just want to show you what it is. And because this world literally didn't have anything to prune most likely out of those chunks, it was very, very quick and normally it takes much longer. But if you press OK, you can see a little bit more about what actually happened. As you can see here, it's told you there are 2,439 keys to process in the database and it's going to scan the database. It's going to digest all the data and that sort of thing. And you can see here, one of the things it does is delete lost entities. So there is a bug in Minecraft Bedrock Edition, which was fixed, but is apparently still in the game, according to various sources, where when an entity dies in Bedrock Edition, its data is still in the world data. So your world database file size goes up by quite a lot. This prune tool will actually make sure to remove any of the lost entity data, which is really quite important. Now, one of the other things it does, which lots of other pruning software doesn't do, is delete portal data. So if there are any portal data out outside of the area that you have pruned that will also get deleted if you don't delete the portal data of an area that has been pruned then you will have sort of invisible portals it's quite strange to be honest 
So another absolutely amazing software that I use on Minecraft Bedrock Edition, which you will have seen me use in my Pinecraft episodes, is Structure, which is basically the bedrock alternative of the blueprint part of Lightmatica. So as you can see here, I have a structure block, and if I actually enable the bounding box, you can see that it is fitted perfectly into the time machine from my lore, other than these back stairs, which I need to extend it to one moment. Okay, there we go. So you can see here now that this structure block has completely got the time machine inside it. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is click export, which will export the structure and we could just save this wherever. So after downloading structure from this GitHub repository, opening the folder and opening the exe, you will be prompted, well, <laughs> with this, but it's fine. It's open source, so you can read the code and stuff. I've used it plenty of times. And there we go. The GUI and also a command prompt background thingy will open. Now, selecting the structure file that we just exported for a second. So here it is. And you could also choose the icon file for the pack as well as the pack name. We're just going to call it Time Machine. And you can do some more advanced stuff like making multiple armor stands in one. But for now, we're just going to do the basics. So I'm going to click make pack. But before I do, I'm just going to click update blocks. So it is definitely using the most up to date blocks. And now we're going to click make pack. And as you can see over here, it now says pack making completed. So we could go ahead and exit this now. And we have our pack right here. Let's import this into the game. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that Structure does not have any updates for 1.19, 18, or 17. But anyway, heading into our global resources, we can now see the time machine pack over here. And I'm going to make sure it's above all the other packs because it will not work with the other armor stand based packs I have. So now that we have loaded into a world, let's place down an armor stand. And you can see here we have the Structure for the actual time machine and we can go ahead and place in all the blocks necessary to build this thing up and it's yeah super useful especially for large scale builds like the base me and Panate were doing or are doing on Pinecraft. As well as this you can actually change the armor stands different poses and it will show you layer by layer the build as well as a small mini version of the build down there which is pretty cool. There's so many different options and settings for this pack as well. You can change the transparency as I mentioned you can make it so it only displays when the armor stand is named something specific. You can add multiple structures. Really this software has so much possibility and so much use it's absolutely great. However, that is going to be it for today's Minecraft Bedrock Edition video. If there's any software or third party utilities that you think I missed out and should have included or checked out on this list, then do make sure to tell me in the comment section down below. Make sure to go check out all the creators that spent time making these pieces of software as well, because without them, Bedrock Edition would not be the same. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video coming very, very soon. Bye.